All right, so in this one, we are going to be reacting to Goresh's ranking the top 10 best characters in the game, uh, September 2024 edition in Dragon Ball Legends. Uh, I've seen a little bit of this list. I've seen the, the tree god placement, which I haven't really heard the reasonings for, so I am curious to see. It is unfortunate right now that Legends is so dead because... I'll be honest, most of these units from this campaign have not made much impact, even if they have made it to a top 10. Um, they're nothing like the top 5 or the top, you know, pinnacle of PvP's peak. That is, you know, the anniversary units of UG4, Ultan, SV, Kid Buzenkai, whatever you say is up there. Uh, none of these movie units have made it there, which, what's the whole point of the campaign if we're not going to get a top tier unit, or at least units? Pretty dumb, but... Maybe, maybe before this campaign ends, we will see it. Uh, this is just my opinion. This is his opinion. This is me giving my opinion on his opinion. Don't get mad. Don't get hurt. It ain't that serious. Let's see what happens. Hey guys, so today we're going to jump into Actually, we're just gonna the September skip straight 2024 to the, uh, top 10 units in well, Dragon Miracles, Ball Legends the intro. List. Uh, as usual, the intro is very obvious. 14 stars, his Q, JPQ. I will say this about JPQ, which again, I've seen a little bit of the list, but nothing fulfilled. At least I don't remember everything at this point. Um, they value rush safety. They are very, very scared, and as you should be to a degree. I think they're a little bit more scared of it than most nations are. Um, they're very scared of the rush mechanic. Uh, that golden button really sets a lot of fear into them, so. A lot of stuff here, I am sure, will be valued at rush safety, rush safety, rush safety, numero uno priority. Uh, honestly, with that, I could even see Ultan being number one here. If not, Omega, Shenron, just a bit higher, Evil Boo. All these rush safety type units, um, a bit higher than you or I, if we're NA, let's say, region would have. But number 10, let's click it, let's get to it. Oh my god. Number 10 is going well, to be um, Super 17. I don't believe... Just to put as a note, uh, if I agree or disagree, I think I remember my entire top 10 list. If I can't, then that's all right. But Super 17, I agree completely. If I agree, I'm just going to move forward because I agree. Why do I... You know, we have the same opinion at that point. I actually had him as well at number 10. Super 17 is very good against UG4. He's very good against units that heal. So let's say you really value Garlic Jr.'s tanking. Well, he heals a lot in that tanking, right? So, Super 17 has anti-health restore. All that anti-health restore against UG4, against Ultan, against Triku, against, like, a billion units. Like, a lot of the meta is HP back, HP back, whether it be through their green card, whether it be tag out, whether it be after combo ends, whether it be main abilities. All those things, he fucks over health restore. So, with that, and Triku does it as well, so Super 17 is also a unit that does it. That's why he's here. Um, he fucks Helter Store. He has immense value via that fucking Helter Store, as well as just being a very good, uh, well, unit in the match by his uh, card ceiling, right? Ceiling strikes and blues. That is very important because what are you going to do? You do a blast against him? Okay, he'll blast clash you. He'll always win it because he draws a card after every time an enemy does a card. He'll most likely draw a blast. Now, boom, boom, boom. You'll do four blasts. He'll have seven more to go still after that. Like, this unit goes crazy as well as his Zenkai buffs. He's top 10 for me. He's number 10 for me. Number 10 for Goresh. So we'll just move on to number 9. Uh, let's see who's here. All right. So number 9 is going to be Zenkai LF Fusion Zamas, who's still a really strong okay. character. Uh, CMZ. I don't remember where I had him. 8? 9? He was something like this, right? He was really close to this. If not, he was actually 9. I actually just want to hear his reasonings on this real quick. Just just what he's going to gas up. Because I only said he's just a sub option. He does good damage. He's better than GB as a sub option just because better burst damage early game. And, well, death buffs... Better than GB giving no buffs, right? One of the better Zenkai Let's you've hear ever this. seen in this game, honestly. It's kind of still ridiculous to me that they made him as good as they did. Uh, I think this guy's Watch probably fallen a few spots uh -huh. since the last list. Agreed. Uh, it's just a lot harder to use this guy, I think, against specifically the two best teams in the game right now, which are GT. Well, I guess there's three teams right now. Fusion Warriors, GT, and Majin Buu Saga, I would say, are the three best teams. Um, Fusion Warriors... He's implying SV Omega G4, GT. This is this is where we're going into the rush safety thing, huh? I, I think this is where we're going to the rush safety department because every single team we just mentioned has very high rush safety. Um, it's valuable rush safety. I think you should have it a lot of matches, if not every match. But that's not the only factor I would say you could determine because I feel like that's like the main factor here, right? Every single team there has rush safety. 
he's still fine against them. I mean, he just said GT. GT has no blue, because CMZ's gonna fuck up GT very easily. Like, CMZ's not struggling against GT, right? Maj Busaga, they have a blue, so I get it. And Fusion Warrior, they also have a blue and SV, so I get it. But, uh, to say this guy struggles against all three teams? Eh, one guaranteed kid boo. Yeah, uh, SV, he's not really that worried about, because he could just neutral and just start beating the shit out of him. Like, CMZ's that guy. When he has a green card, does two strikes, beats the shit out of you. Like, you can't really stop him in that. Um, but, uh, yeah, he struggles more, but it's more just, again, he's replaced. Omega Shenron just takes his role. What do you want? Someone to die on Rush or to UG4 ult? Or do you want someone to live on those things and have a second life? You, you want the living thing. And against all of those teams, it is very difficult to take advantage of this guy's uh, two best assets, which I, which I think are number one. First damage? AoE green card, which you oh. can combo into the Rush or uh, an ultimate. Uh, and the main ability which gives him endurance nullification into a rising rush it's hard what about to really his take advantage of those two things because there's just so much i wouldn't um, say those are his best assets at all i would say his burst damage and his great healing that he has because he has a really good healing after a combo taken two times he would just full heal basically via his plat and his uniques how they work um his greatest asset definitely is his burst strike damage not i guess the main ability sure but he already had that and i don't think that was much value back then it didn't really lose or gain value. I, I guess it lost a little value because of all these units that just fuck it over. But you can still, like, rush snipe with CMZ. It's not like yeah, Kid Boo does a strike. Or rather, CMZ does a strike. And then you do his main. And then you do the rush. Well, th th you're, you're doing it, right? No, nothing's stopping you. I mean, that's kind of iffy. But it's still just catch them one time with that sequence. And it's not impossible to catch someone one time in their not opportune sequence. It's going to happen. Yeah, no, that, that that doesn't sound too difficult. I mean, against GT, sure, but against Maj Busaga, I mean, that's not the hardest thing in the world at all. And that's maybe, like his worst matchup. character rushes now, and also combined with the fact that um, so many characters remove buffs, right? So if you go for a main ability rush this character, odds are you're not going to be killing anybody with the rush because there's going to be buff removal somewhere. I mean, um, sometimes, so I think it's not always. It's a little bit more tough to use this character. I actually sometimes. think one of the better things this guy brings to the table, which is insane to think about, is his bulk. Mm -hmm. uh, there's well, a lot of sustain. times where he, you know, he sustains. Yes, uh, players are going to go for ultimates or whatever against this character in hopes of killing him. And as long as this guy survives, he's healing that, a lot. Exactly, he's healing sustain. A lot. That's sustain. Uh, he's not bulking. Bulking means tanking. That's garlic. Uh, equipment and with how much tanking. bulk this guy just has for being okay a Zenkai tanking. character. Um, on top of usually having at least two Zenkai buffs, I guess depending on the team you're running for him, but. Um, he's a pretty hard to, hard to kill character, and I think for me that actually adds a lot of value to him. But uh -huh. uh, he's definitely not become as free as he was before, especially I think um, one of the characters this guy certainly was very, very strong against is Fusing Goju to Blue, and uh, you just, you know, in, in God rank around there, you just don't run into that character. <laughs> so he also thinks GB is washed. Good, good. I'm not the only one. Great. GB is washed. I'm sorry to break the news to you. GB is just a worse SV. That's just the simplest math. GB is a lot worse SV and arguably worse than CMZ because early game. Do them both together. Pre-GB to CMZ. Who's being someone's ass higher? Who has better neutral in that early game setting? It'll always be CMZ. Always and forever be CMZ at that point. But uh, yeah, GB a bit washed. I find his, his reasons interesting here because nothing was <laughs> really positive. I guess he can live was the positive reasoning. Um, to be number nine and just say he can live is interesting to me because that doesn't really mean anything but he can live so that's why he's number nine i mean i would say there's more to it but sure let's let's say that he's just a sub option i think anyone below top eight seven ish area is just a sub option you saw it there super 17 is just a sub option red two other reds cmz same thing now we go into number eight and let's see who is here Okay, so number baby. Eight, I think baby. I had exact. I think these bottom three. I had the exact same order. If I'm not mistaken, maybe I'm forgetting. Right, baby. No, baby was seven slash eight with Brule, and he was seven. I think CMZ was nine though. I think I had the same kind of order going on here. So I agree with this, baby. Um, he mentioned GT is a very strong team. I don't think it's one of the best because it's not that impenetrable. I mean, there's. I would say Fusions is just better GT at that point, right? Because baby. You're replacing for SV. SV is just better than Baby, so yeah, I wouldn't say this is one of the best teams in the game. GT that he'll be on, obviously, of Omega Shot on UG4 himself. But Baby himself, I mean, he is the best sniper to UG4. I'll keep saying this over and over again. That is not UG4. 
as UG4 can obviously one-shot himself. I guess Ultan could be in that discussion. Uh, SV, if you want to, you know, include the rush little silliness, but he also has Omega right there, so you can't always rush him out. Um, but for ultimate to ultimate to, you know, sniping with cards, baby is the best one that is not UG4. Because you have that gauge filled, you do one strike, you do the ultimate, guess what? They're locked in, you do that, bada bing, bada boom, there's baby's value going up there. I wouldn't say Saiyans are the, uh, ultimate only, you know, tag run in PvP right now. There definitely is a couple tags, a lot of PO characters, a lot of regen characters, some hybrid and Gohan there. But, um, there is some extra damage to Saiyans there, so... I can understand why he's here because, well, I agree that he's here and his job is to snipe UG4, if not help a little bit on his team, if not sub manipulation, if not, well, mediocre damage to on Saiyans, but, you know, that's neither here nor there. But I agree. Number eight. Let's get to number seven. Oh, that's number eight. Number seven. Thank you. On a number seven. All right, number seven is going to be Green Evil Boo. So I 100% disagree. I would say his peak is top 15, but, uh, he did say Majibu Saga is one of the best, and I did mention that they value rush safety very highly in this queue, so I guess we'll see where that kind of culminates in itself right here, because this is just a rush safety unit, and really, really not even a perfect one. I mean, I, I fought a good amount of evil, but well, let me just shut up. Uh, this guy is probably the epitome of what every team needs on their team, I guess. I don't know. It's not like he's doing one okay. thing that's like, oh my god, I wish I had this on this team or something like that. He's just, like, specifically customized for the Boo Saga team to function as well as it functions. Again, I made an entire video talking about I, I think that... I'm assuming Omega Shenron's, like, I don't know, four, maybe five, maybe three. I, I don't know how he's going to glaze him. Because it's rush safety. But to me, just put it out there... Uh, if a unit is just, its value is, it's a sub-option to this other guy, which Evil Boo is just a sub-option to Omega, let's be realistic here. Uh, you don't even need him in Majin Buu Saga, you could easily just run Omega, Ultan, Kid Buu. I don't think you lose anything. I actually think you only gain if you run Omega instead of Evil Boo. Evil Boo does much less damage. Um, I guess the best thing is that he disrupts a little better in, like, the first few combos, because, you know, he reduces key a lot, but then you could just swap and units get infinite key on entry, it feels like nowadays. So, yeah, um, being a sub-option and being number seven is very high praise, in my opinion, because you don't really need to run him. I mean, it's like me saying, I don't know, um, UVB is top ten, or UVB is, like, number ten and CMZ is number nine. Because UVB is a sub option to CMZ, and it's like that that wouldn't make much sense, right? Because that those are sub options. Evil Blue is just a sub option to Omega. So this is really high for unit that's just much inferior to his, well, predecessor. Video's gonna go up after the video I do talking about bias. Okay. And it really does feel like the development team went into the sixth anniversary with a mission. They were like if we don't accomplish anything, anything else during the sixth anniversary, at least the Boo Saga team is going to be like the best team in the game by the end of the celebration. If nothing else happens, we are going to die by the fact that the Boo Saga team is going to be the best team in the game by the end of the huh? celebration. And they did everything in their power to make that happen. But it isn't. And, you know, this making this guy the way that they made him is probably the single biggest contributor to the Boo Saga team being as good as it is. I mean, there's a lot of pieces to that puzzle. Ultimate. Okay, let's say they failed in that because they did fail. That, that there's no argument that would ever substantiate that <laughs> Majibu Saga was ever the best. <laughs> I mean, maybe like did did Kid Buu Zenkai happen before UG4 dropped? Unless that happened, which I don't remember. Um, maybe that one week, it was the best with Evil Buu, and no one even ran it. No one even really ran Kid Buu at all in this release. They just didn't try him, and now people are. Thank God they are because he's amazing. Um, even though he actually had Ultra Gohan before UG4 dropped, so there was even a point to run him. Yeah, no, I. it never was the best in my recollection. It still isn't the best at all. Once again, the Omega variant he mentioned, Fusions, that would be arguably just the best, if not one of the better teams than Majin Buu Saga. Again, it's just better units, but I want to hear Evil Buu details. Gohan Give me being details on him. Kid Buu Zenkai being as good as it is, the equipment options being ridiculous. But this guy really does feel like the the glue character for the Boo Saga team. Obviously, I think Kid Boo and Ultimate Go on individually are better as characters than yes. this character. But 
Um, this guy really fits that team exceptionally well. He's, his buff removal, his bulk, his type neutrality, his card destruction, disrupt, key reduction. Like, he's doing what the team needs him to do. I mean, do. I'm, I'm not going to disagree that he has all these things. He has all these things. I agree that's in his kit. But let's just detail it a little bit. The type neutral is only after combo taken. So he has defense neutral after combo taken. And I think on green card or something like that, it, it's both of those, if not one of those, right? I know it's after combo taken, though, because I do stuff uh, around that. Um, the key disruption, again, that's like a, a hit or miss in my eyes because some units, you know, let's say he key disrupts my pre SV. You know, I was attacking, I was type neutral because he swapped in, and guess what? All right, he key disrupted me. He got below 50%. He reduced my key to zero. Well, guess what? I just swapped to UG4, and I have, what is it, 50, 60 key UG4 gets on entry, and I have two cards, and my combo extends, and you're still not neutral because the combo is still going. That is like a hit or miss at that point, right? Um, he has a pseudo lock, the sub count manipulation, when he is on full Nazbu Saga, which is important. I think people forget about that because people don't use, use that offensively. They will swap into Evil Boo defensively, right? When they're taking hits, not offensively. So that also exists, but uh, buff effect removal, sure. Uh, the thing is with that, I mean, you're not always going to get the ideal, right? Let's say I do a strike with UG4 against Kid Boo, and they then I do my ultimate. Well, you're going to go into Evil Boo, but it's going to be too late. So that buff effect removal, while it'll be effective in some sequences and some others, it, it's again, it's like a hit or miss. Sometimes it'll stop stuff, but other times it's just like other units are going to be in. Kid Boo has good sustain. Ultan has some card destruction on his first swap in with attack gauge. So there's good parts to him, but they're not always consistent with Evil Boo. I, I don't find him very consistently like causing me an issue. He would reduce my key and be annoying if I use like an older unit, but again, that's me using an older unit. Just new units do not really have much dilemma if you like dealing with this guy. Do at all times. And I, I really don't think they could have made a better fit for that third character on the Boo Saga team than they did with this evil Boo. Um, this guy could have been a little bit more damaging unit. is better than most LFs we've seen released. I mean, it's just, it's just insane. Yeah, I would say uh, that, but most LFs just have been that great. Dragon Ball Destruction, like, there's, I, I could literally list like 20 different things this character is doing mm -hmm. and brings to the table for that team. Some of us are immune so to overall, it. just a really strong Dragon Ball Destruction and SV. to show how insane he is, even when there. we have ridiculously good purples right now mm -hmm. and him being number seven on here he's I not bad just, it's just i think he's getting, getting overrated to hell here i have evil boot number seven let's move on to number six all right so coming in at number six i have lf tree of might goku this is essentially six i mean i disagree with evil boo if we weren't obvious enough uh tree coup listen i put him like 12 or something man look I i'm a bit jaded with him uh not even because you know i didn't own him for a few days i used them i used my 10 stars i had my opinion on him from that usage of 10 stars use him in a long video on his best team though he misses zenkaba on his best team it's still his best team um and he didn't really do much for me he didn't impress me at all i was pretty disappointed and i'm also jaded by the fact that every singular one i don't think there's been more than maybe two or three that i have fought and i'm saying high star low star any star but the opponent using him uses him fucking terribly. I can't emphasize how badly. It's just go watch any video since Triku has released. You'll see abhorrent Triku usage. I don't know what it is. I don't know what they're doing. People don't realize his green's a long animation for once. Everyone's just throwing that shit out at long range like, ha it's going to hit. Bitch, it ain't hitting. You just gave me a free combo. You're a dumbass. And everyone, I can't. I can't stress enough, everyone. So I'm very jaded by the fact that just people I'm running into are using him atrociously. But again, even in my usage, I just used him with uh, that new plat. I just used him a week ago on his release with his own, you know, whatever team there, his best sub, in my opinion. And I don't really see much to him. Like, I get what he does. I understand what's going on. But the flaws in him are glaring flaws that just don't need to exist. Um, for one... That neutral, why can it be canceled? I understand, like, UG4 is being canceled because, like, he just pops me in and gets a free kill, and then, okay, cool. Uh, UG4's main ability neutral can be canceled. I understand that because it's so easy to do. But why, when this guy, he gets neutral, ally dead, you pop main, 20 counts neutral. It's not even long. 20 counts is fucking nothing, I'll be honest with you here. And for two, it can be canceled. Why? He wants to do these blue cards and ultimates. He wants to do them. He really does, especially with his gauge proctor ready. Gets the infinite vanishes via blues and ults. It's great. You do an ultimate to, like, 
60% of this game, guess what? You're removing your buff effects. Guess what? His neutral's gone. Guess what? If a red's there, he's fucking useless again because he can't fucking do anything because now he's not neutral anymore. I feel like that's a big flaw. His damage is nothing crazy. He can combo long, which is good. He has health store debuff, which is good. There's positives to him. But six, I mean, for God's sake, I don't even know what he's doing to even be like top eight. Like, I, I really don't know. Also mentioned, I see both, uh, I know both Broly's won't be mentioned at this point because we're way too high up. Both Broly's, I think Ultra Broly, fine, you could dismiss LFZ Broly, I, I, whatever, dismiss him. He's on the lower end for me anyways. Ultra's, Ultra Z Broly is really, really strong. I'm not sure what the uh, dismissal is of him here. Not not really sure at all, but I guess he's not here. I, I feel like Ultra Z Broly should be somewhere. Like, if you're going to have Evil Boo and Baby, uh, Ultra Z Broly is definitely, maybe not team-wise better than Evil Boo, but, I mean, he's definitely individually better than both those units, and I feel like that's pretty valuable. But, Tree Man, let me hear it. The only I'm not gonna pause it that I have on till the end of this past two months of Pop releases. Off. I don't think anybody else makes this uh, besides Goku. It's, you know, every release that we've had as part of this Z movie celebration has kind of just been irrelevant, which is insane to think about considering we've had a lot of summonable characters, like eight, nine, or something like that. Uh, but yeah, this this Goku I think is pretty damn good. Uh, he did exactly what I was hoping he would do, which is to act as a targeted counter towards Super Saiyan 4 Gogeta. And also, in a way, he actually does do a good job of also countering Ultimate Gohan with the healing reduction uh, and stuff like that, that as well. That is helpful, I agree. Um, but this guy being yellow obviously is a very big positive for him. I think if he was any other color, he would probably be significantly lower on the list. Um, I definitely think he's a character that they, they could have made eh, better I'm not as sure well, about that. right? I mean, I went into this release saying, like, okay, like, this character needs to kind of be like top three material and i kind of wish he was a, a bit better he does need to be top um, three material but i think he does. the he number does. one thing that this character needed to be was a counter to gogeta and i think they did accomplish that although again he could have been a bit better i'm not going he's to not a counter that. gogeta man um, but i think in terms of his i said i was gonna pause i need to pause that's team. just inaccurate that's just not true that that's just not a thing he does not counter gogeta he deters one ultimate and let me tell you how you get around that you do an ultimate you have omega right he mentioned fusions you have you have Omega on two teams actually. He's had fusions in GT. Use Omega's ultimate. Omega's ultimate doesn't even fuck. Who care? Whoever uses Omega's ultimate, uh, caring for the pinnacle of damage that's gonna go on. No one gives a shit about it. You pop his ultimate to get buffs. You pop his main to remove a Dragon Ball or whatever the fuck it does, and that's it. Just use Omega. It doesn't have to hit. Just just use the ultimate. Just use it, and then boom. UG4 is countered. The neutral thing that he would lose is not countered anymore. He, he doesn't care anymore. It's just a typical UG4. And then the anti-green card stuff, yeah, sure, that's an annoyance. It's not like pre-SV, SV, and Omega have shitty green cards. Omega has a pseudo-lock green card, which is fantastic. You have SV's green card, which just gives him cover and all, which he fucking begs for. Not using UG4's green cards or whatever. And that's all, that's literally all Goku does to UG4. I guess health store stuff, as well as a defensive, or rather offensive tool he has against them, but this does not this is not a counter namek goku was a better counter uvb than this goku is to ug4 cooler was a better counter usv than this goku is to ug4 he is a deterrent that's the best wording that's the most accurate wording there is zero there really is not much i wouldn't say zero there's like 15 percent of his kit that's actually good against ug4 that's going to happen every single game which is the green card stoppage which is the health store stuff and again, that won't even happen every game, actually. The green card stoppage will. The ultimate thing, just throw a different ult. And d be honest, do you really need to use UG4's ult when you pop his main? You're neutral. Just do the normal cards. Like, I don't feel like that's just a uh, wow mindset. Just just do the normal fucking cards. It's not, and it's not like this Goku's a tank. Even if you do the ult against this Goku, I wouldn't say he's going to die, you know, very easily. But... He ain't gonna live very easily either, and you're still fucking over health store and Dragon Balls. Like, even if you do the ult with this Goku canceling your buffs, you still have immense value of UG4's ult. That's not a counter at all. He he fails in what he wants. He wants to be a counter. He's a failure counter. Doesn't do his job. You can sort of compare this character in a way to Blue LS17. Now, I'm not saying he's as good. He's a wannabe. He's a Temu version. Sure. He's a Temu conflated. I'm MVP. Not, I'm not saying that. There's True. no comparison. I understand what he's talking about. Was 
significantly better than this game yes. was unreleased. True. I think when that Blue 17 came out, I think I might have had him at like number two on my list, only behind Gogeta Blue or something like that. But, this guy will never be yeah, him. Uh, this Goku is not, certainly not as good as Blue 17 was on release, but he fulfills a similar role to that Blue 17 on his team when he came out, which is to be... He attempts to. The second or third character, maybe you just slide him on the leader slot, and he's going to help the team work better. He has very, very good ways of gaining... Um, gaining priority with the long range green card you can tackle yes. into it uh you can you can basically override opponents blasts with it to start combos his gauge i think is fairly good remember the gauge can activate even when he's on standby mm -hmm. so you can actually be eating combos with a different character mm -hmm. and this goku's gauge filling up can disrupt the opponent's combo from being on standby uh he has it's just like babies which a lot of people say baby's gauge isn't good enough to disrupt so if baby's gauge isn't good enough to disrupt Goku's gauge is the same thing. That means both gauges are not good enough to actually have meaningful disrupt. They will be annoying, but they will not disrupt to such an extent that it has significant value. People have said that since Baby has released, his gauge was not enough to disrupt, especially in Super 17 back then. People say that now with the pre-tags, with all these characters that do infinite cards. Even if a Goku disrupts a Goku, Goku can still combo. That's how bad his gauge is because it's not enough disrupt. It literally won't even stop the own character he does it against himself. It's not a good enough gauge. Multiple ways of getting vanished back. So he's a very technical character. Kind of a character I would almost say, you know, if you're not as technically sound with the mechanics of the game, you're probably going to underrate this guy a little bit. Um, technically but yeah, sound? I do think this character is pretty effective. He's solid defensive character. He can combo for Using long periods of time your blue cards time technical? with other characters. And he's going to work really well with other characters that have endurance. Uh, even like God Goku, again, I'm not the huge... I'm not, okay. I'm, even though I use God Goku a lot in my videos, I, d I definitely don't think God Goku either was as good as he should have been on release. And there's a reason he's not on my list here. He, I don't even think he's particularly close to making the list. But he Thank can work God. well with characters like that that have endurance because he can... Um, ensure that they survive things like Super Saiyan 4 Gogeta's ultimate. He doesn't uh, ensure. And again, this character being as good as he is against Ultimate Gohan and Super Saiyan 4 Gogeta is one of the reasons why I have him at number six on this list here. So. He's not that great against um, them, man. I feel like I've pretty much touched on all the... Maj Buu Saga, throw out Evil Buu or Kid Buu's ult. You say Maj Buu Saga is one of the best? Okay, waste one of their ults. Kid Buu's ult does shit. Evil Buu's ult, I guess, waste Kid Buu's ult because Evil Buu's can destroy Dragon Balls. Kid Buu's ult, waste it, does shit damage. Literally two blasts, out damage Kid Buu's ult, waste it. You're facing Goku, oh no. Now Ultan can do his ultimate and one-shot Goku. Can one-shot anybody. It, it's not a hard thing to accept and understand. I, I don't feel like this is rocket science. If you're saying, but he's wasting a full ultimate, that, okay? It's a shitty ultimate! Omega Shenron and Kid Buu's ultimates are not some grandiose, I'm gonna do everything and clear the whole battlefield. It's two shitty ults. I guess Omega's is better, but Kid Buu's is fucking ass. We all know that. Just waste a shitty ult, and then boom, Goku, half his value of defensiveness is fucking dead. If not more than half, like 70%, because not every unit has AoE green that has a lock-in. Most actually have sub in it, so most his value dies if you just waste a shitty ult. Yeah, things I wanted to say about this really guy. Really simple. Uh, if we start seeing more people using, like, Super 17, I think Super 17 probably is the worst... Uh, matchup for this character right now that I can yeah, think he would of. ignore his he wouldn't give a uh, shit about his gauge just just saying um, you don't see he would three card him so even I, neutral I, I, I probably want to consider like I got a rank grind I think I ran into like one Broly or something like yeah. no one uses Broly he's not safety units um, so no one uses them GPQ that's, that's literally how it is um, safety units for but you don't really run into him too often but he's like a he's essentially almost like a targeted counter to this guy but uh, yeah, I mean, so sure. pretty good character overall. Broly he's more is, probably but Broly's not common where there. He should be on this list. But if I was to pick out like sort of one area where I would want him to be better at, I probably would just choose more damage for him. He does and, need more damage. Um, I probably would also add Rising Rush to his he, buff he removal. He definitely effect. needed that. that I sort of the thousand percent agree. I think they could have maybe adjusted that a little bit. I think like, one of the strongest things this guy's doing is removing enemy buff effects and attribute upgrades when they do I ultimate. How you can Only stop once, this. but I could activate when he's, when he's on standby, which is strong. So. Uh, again, you're, you're really looking to use that against, like, Super Saiyan 4 Gogeta's you, ultimate. You don't get to choose. But regardless, That's the issue. you're always going to be essentially almost nullifying one ultimate the enemy does. Sure. The one... You know the biggest issue for this character is, and I've been thinking about this, actually? Um, out of all the characters that you see frequently ran in PvP right now, I think the biggest problem for this character is actually fusing Super Vegito. 
Why? The main reason why is just rush him. He doesn't give a fuck. Remove buffs when the enemy rushes. So exactly. Even when this guy's on standby, there's also a dilemma. Buff removal doesn't even stop one of the best. Super Vegito can just rush. He doesn't stop UV4. He also doesn't stop his cohort. Guy next level, or something like that. But not a very common thing to do. So Super Vegito is pretty, pretty difficult, honestly, for this character to deal with. This guy, uh, after he gets Vegito to half health, Vegito will disrupt this character's combo, and then he can fuse up and stuff like that, and it becomes, again, it, it becomes tough for this guy to really gain tons of value against Super Vegito. So that, I think, is the it's biggest one on this guy's side right now. But against, again, the major purple characters who are dominating the game, does really well. So I think number six is fair for this character right now. We'll see how well he ages. Uh, we'll move on to the top five next. All right, number five, we're looking at Zenkai right. LF um, Kid. Goku, I, I already said enough. Uh, I, I feel like I've wasted enough time talking about Goku. My tree of my Goku my entire fucking life already with how mediocre he's done against him for me and whatever his placement is here. But uh, Kid Buu number five. Uh, I think I had Kid Buu. I think I actually had Kid Buu three? Three. Yeah, I had Kid, yeah, 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 yeah. Kid Buu. Uh, yeah, Kid Buu below Omega makes no sense to me. Um, obviously, Omega Shenron safer, like I said in the beginning. They value rush safety. This is the most important tool in the JPQ to ever exist, and I understand that. That's not even a dig at it. That's just what they value. Um, the Kid Buu, the, the thing of Kid Buu, you mention it here. Maj Buu Saga, very rush safe team. Uh, Kid Buu's other teams of Old Tan, Kid Buu, and Omega, another very much more, actually, than even Evil Buu. A very, very rush safe team. So if that's the dilemma, rush safety for Kid Buu, uh, okay, it, it's solved by Omega. And I guess Omega Shenron being that solution is why he's higher. I cannot agree. I think Kid Buu individually just does too much. Uh, his damage is way too high. You know, you can touch on that Goku again. Guess what? Goku destroys two cards of Kid Buu via his gauge. Oh no, do you think Kid Buu with his 4x card draw speed, his infinite green cards... His infinite blast damage is going to give a fuck about that Goku's disrupt? No, not at motherfucking all. Is there any greens that really give a shit? Or rather, can it hurt Kid Buu to such a high extent that he can't do anything? No, because Ultan is right there as his partner. So, Kid Buu has to be higher for me. Um, I don't know what Omega's doing, and that'll be in Omega section, I guess, that we'll see, which I guess he's top four here. Um, what he does that's, like, so high above Kid Buu, so I guess we'll go to Omega, but Kid Buu, I disagree I think he should be higher because he is doing everything on damage, especially early game. Ultan doesn't do much damage. Omega doesn't do much damage um, in a lot of settings, especially because so many purples. Uh, Kid Buu is the one to do everything in most matches. He is the one clearing out PvP when Ultan does not have his gauge yet, which is pretty a lot early game, especially if you're popping the green cards of Kid Buu and not Ultan to get the gauge faster. So I guess we'll go to number four and hope Omega Shenron's there. To number four. All right, so coming into number three They're tied. and four, okay. it's actually going to be a shared. So SV, well, okay. What am I thinking here? Um, I have SV above Omega, I believe it is. So I would have SV four and Omega five and Kid Buu three, Ultan, and UG four tied one, two. So SV would be four. Okay, well, let me just, let me just hear this. Spot between fusing Super Vegito and... Uh... LF Omega Shenron. I think it was pretty tough for me to decide on who I liked better here because these characters are so different from each other. Um, I think Omega is probably just the safest character in the game right now. I mean, he's the de facto character you just put on your team when you don't really have any other character that you, you know. I mean, we're going to say Omega is really safe. I understand indestructible. I understand his access to neutral via the gauge when he, you know, defensively or offensively. There's still UG4 and Ultan that exist. If we're going to say Ultan's not like the safest unit in the game, the UG4, whatever else, Vegito, I, I don't fucking know, Kid Buu, one of these other few, it doesn't make much sense to me. Um, you were not, we can't, like, Triku's value is just not that high to make these other units so unsafe. Like, I I'm sorry, it's just, I, I don't see it, man. Like, it it's not Omega. Omega's not the safest. You know you want to put on there. I think he's he very good to make your team of safer. Two of but he the is top three teams in the game no. right now. He is a core member of Fusion Warriors and a mm -hmm. core member of GT. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, Fusion Warriors, by the way, I would just run these two next to Gogeta, and then, and then GT, you run uh, Baby next to Omega mm -hmm. and Super Saiyan 4 Gogeta. I think both those teams are very, very insane. They're very good um, rush-safe teams. You're always going to run characters like Gogeta and the Fusion Super Vegeta next to Omega, so basically the opponent never can rush you, or they either have to use an ultimate to get rid of Omega's Endurance or uh, Indestructible first, and then that could open up the rush for them later. I've seen players who feel more uh, comfortable rushing. I don't... <laughs> You have to use an ultimate to get a, rid of his indestructible. That's, I mean, it's a bit of glaze now. It's just just a bit. I mean, you, you don't you, you don't have to do that. You don't. Pushing like as fast as possible to get rid of Omega's indestructible, and then that opens up Super Saiyan Four Gogeta's ultimate later on. Which I think both methods are, are viable, but it's like you're always going to have to sort of just like give up one of your big time hits to get rid of Omega's indestructible. Um, one of the things that I think is still probably a bit underrated just about Omega is how insane the Dragon Ball acquisition on Battle Start is with him. Mm -hmm. I've had so many matches where I just get my Rising Rush first combo because of that mechanic. And again, I, I feel like with Omega, you just you just rush as soon as you get a Rising Rush and then y you just get a second one. <laughs> it is very common to just get multiple rushes per you match do? with him. Even I don't when run this matches too often. Don't I don't know. Mate, I guess especially when you're comparing him or not comparing him but especially when, you, when you're pairing him with fusing super vegeto who also um has the dragon i understand the premise ability, which i think is that, also very i don't important know if that's right true uh, something else about omega 2 is uh, omega has multiple ways of getting ultimates and i think a uh -huh. lot of times when you're fighting an opponent who's using uh, lf tree of my goku because i have at this point here, a, here a lot comes. of players who've used tree of my goku i think he's a pretty common character to run into at least for me on the jpq right now i also face him with um it. obviously tree of my goku has the one time buff and attribute upgrade removal when the end here it comes ultimate. this is so he's hurting his tree of goku value here I do typically as well is i'll use omega's ultimate just to get rid of that uh mechanic I will actually end up buffing Super Saiyan 4 Gogeta's ultimate with Omega's ultimate, and then I'll just I'll save Super Saiyan 4 Gogeta's ultimate after I've used Omega's ultimate. Do you see how I mentioned this in the number six tree of Goku placement? And it doesn't make much sense how he would be so high if you literally know the way to counter him. To counter his main effectiveness is right there. So how is he still have such high value if you're just plopping an ult and wasting his best mechanic it, this, this is what i mean it just doesn't make sense how he's so high and there's like nothing <laughs> that can survive that i mean <laughs> goku like goku right. has already used that buff removal already on the omega ultimate so gojita at that point is not gonna be um so it's not, not gonna be a counter the like he he's said gonna, the buff it's just a deterrent like i said um i think omega is actually a pretty good character against uh, right. tree of might goku as well but overall, I mean, there's not really much else that needs to be said about him. His gauge is pretty pretty good. He's good offensively, good defensively, all around. You, you can get the feint, which pretty much just all right. the fight. I'm going to move on here. Omega, Vegito, honestly, they're so close. Three, four, five. It's not even too hard of a gap. Whatever. They're all they're all in the same boat. Uh, I'm, I'm just lost on the literal irony of saying Goku's such high value because the ultimate thing, oh my goodness, you're going to make an ultimate be forced. Then he just says... Oh, just throw out this shitty ultimate and then just buff this other guy's ult. So what's the point of mentioning the good value if you know how to stop the good value? It it just doesn't make sense to me. It, it just it, it doesn't make any sense. Number right, two. So number two. Ultan. All right. UG4 so is number one. Whoop, whoop. Do you fucking do? I have them tied. I think UG4 has uh, a good team of uh, himself, SV Omega, whether you feel that's the number one, three, four unit or they're a bit lower. Whatever, I think Ultan's team of himself, Kid Buu, which I would rate higher than Omega, than Goresh did here, and uh, um, Kid Buu and Omega uh, and Ultan is the good trio as well. That is just having Yuji 4 and Ultan be kind of in the same boat, and I think they are, to a degree, if you are getting, you know, Ultan with his infinite blues, infinite greens, he is just as annoying, if not a little bit less annoying than Yuji 4. A lot of people play Yuji 4 shitty. You can't really play Ultan shitty. I guess unless you're wasting his one-shot move. And even then, you just do cards, you get infinite blues, infinite greens, and it's a 50-50 every time. Like, that is just as obnoxious as UG4's gauges, and a lot of people play his gauges shitty, so I would say Ultan to UG4 is like a 1A, 1B, because their teams are not too far in gap. Ultan is worse than UG4, but the way UG4 gets played is a lot worse than Ultan, which is much more autopilot, much more easy. Though UG4's autopilot, it's a little bit, you know, I guess... Too easy to where people fuck it up. 
Ultan is just, hey, just spam these cards, get infinite blues. That's a 50 50. You know, you sidestep or not, depends what happens to the next combo, and more infinite blues come your way, or you caught him and he's going to die. Happens to a lot of units. Ultan is the star of that, but um i i'm just confused on tree of might and evil boo like i don't understand that no mention of ultra broly once again i think he's a good unit maybe his teams are lacking a little bit sure if we're gonna say that super 17 does he have such a great team i mean let's look at his teams here it's not very fucking good right especially if you're gonna 2x him i guess you do uh, super that one team i do super 17 rage and omega uh, okay it's two fit two barely top 10 to 15 units and then a top five unit. If you're going to do Ultra Broly, you would do himself, let's say Baby CMZ. Okay, that's two top 10 units. And then arguably another top 10 unit. So it would be technically better. I mean, no. I don't fucking know. I feel like he should be on this list. I'm just saying like seven, eight, something like that. But nonetheless, um, UG4, Ultan 1, I would have him tied. So 1, 2, no fucking difference. If you had Ultan number 1, UG4 number 2, I still wouldn't even debate you. Uh, I'm confused on... Uh, on Omega above Kid Boo, I'm really not too sure on that, but it's not too big, too big of a gap, so it's whatever. Uh, Triku, I he literally counter like went against his own point. Like I, I, I don't even know. Like I don't even know what to say about that. Evil Boo, he's just a Temu Omega, so I, I don't give a fuck about him. His placement's way too high here. Then the others, I have them basically same order. So like the top of the top, whatever. Top four, okay, I'll accept cope, whatever. Sure, all similar placements, why not? Uh, the bottom, was it 8 through 10? All same placements, why not? That middle area, man, that uh, 7, 6, 5, I'm just a little thrown to the wayside by, especially 7 and 6. I just think they were just plopped on here. I'm not even sure what they really do to stop much stuff going on in PvP, but they are here. Um, Triku really confuses me because, again, he literally went against his own point when he was talking about Omega. How did you hurt Triku's value, and you could do that every singular game, so Triku's best value goes down every singular game, that would mean him being number six doesn't make much sense, because his value is lessened every singular game on his best mechanic, and it's not like he's stopping UG4 anyways, so that really is his best value, that ultimate, you know, cancellation effect, which he already mentioned, you can just fuck that over, you can't stop it, and now it's going to make UG4's ult even harder hitting, via Omega's ult just being wasted because you need to waste it anyways. So what is Triku's value supposed to be? Not much, in my opinion. But nonetheless, um, interesting top 10 nonetheless. Uh, a bit confusing in some spots, so I won't lie. But uh, let me know what I think of his top 10 list, my reaction to his top 10 list. And I'll see you guys in the next one.